Dr. Gregory Hartner here, three-time Olympic medalist and world champion in track and field. Today we'll be talking to Javan Minzi, one of Jamaica's best schoolboy sprinter in the business. He ran 10.02 to make the Olympic team in 2016. Unfortunately, he was not able to, to run in the flat race and he has overcome a lot during that time. Many are asking, where is Javan Minzi? Why was he not able to transition successfully on the international scene? But here is the information. Here is Javan telling us some of the struggles that he has experienced and some of the major issues and setbacks that prevented him from becoming the best version of himself. It was a pleasure talking to Javan. I am sure most of you wanted to know exactly what took place with him and you will hear it in his own words. It was a pleasure talking to him. He, to me, he's more aware and he understand what it takes to achieve his highest potential now. And I truly look forward to watching him compete for 2022. Here is the interview. Javan, where are you from? Where are you born? Well, uh, I was born in Linstead, St. Catherine. Mm -hmm. uh, spent most of, most of the time between um, <coughs> Portland and um, Trelawney because I used to grow up on the farm. My mommy was an eagle, so I had to be on the farm with her growing up and also on the truck back. <laughs> selling selling the goods uh, for us to uh, so, have money. So for those who really don't understand what it is like growing up in Linstead and so on, and what was life like for you um, growing up on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, growing up, um, it was fun because I get to watch um, all the things that I plant grow up and and could reap it and, and carry it to the market and sell. Life was much easier for me at that time. It was just plant things, enjoy what, what I grow, mm -hmm. and just sell it and get money. So life was just easy at that time. Mm. What high school did you attend? Uh, I used to attend the Bogwalk High School. Oh, the bad work. And what was your high school life like? And when did you decide to start running track? Well, I, to be honest, when I was in basic school, we would call it kindergarten. For those who don't know it as basic school, I, I was doing track and field, uh, running at the time. Every sports day I would be running. My mommy would be on the sideline cheering me on, my family also. And then... um. Same thing with high school. I used to attend the Lindsay Primary and Junior High School. And um, still, just enjoy track and field there. Hmm. Then, once I, once I finished school, I went, once I finished uh, primary school, I went to the Bogwalk High School. Mm -hmm. There I meet um, Donovan Dennis, my high school coach. He's the one who bring me to the forefront as a junior athlete, even though I never wanted to do track and field. He saw me running sports, say, hey, come, let's go. I'm like, I'm not doing track and field, even though that was what I was doing in primary school coming up. Mm -hmm. So from there, I've been just training, working hard. And he saw that I, I never liked to lose. So that was one of the reasons why he also said, let's do track and field. Okay, makes sense. Uh, you, you have been through a lot. What has um, the journey been like for you, say, coming out of high school to where you are right now? Tell us in your own words, what have the journey been for you? Um, uh, they always said life is bittersweet, so that's the word I can find best to describe leaving out of high school and being in the senior ranks it's ups and downs uh, a lot of frustration sleepless nights so it's bittersweet for me that's the only word i can find 
so so describe. you see i know that it has been one of the most challenging thing to make the transition successfully from high school into the pros or even into a college and you yes. were one of jamaica's best when you look on the evidence it says that you are one of only 14 young athletes to run 10 three or better in high school why do you think the transition has been so difficult for you moving from high school straight into the pros despite your 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 talent that displayed in high school well um i would say it would it, it would comes back down to how you carry yourself towards being a professional Remember, I'm just leaving out of high school. Every week, I would be every weekend, I would be competing. So, the, between high school and pro level, you have to wait a certain time to compete. If the coach don't say that you look certain way, they would not let you compete. So, I like to compete. Once I start to compete, it don't matter. Keep on running and running. I will get better at it. So coming into the pro level, I would run this week, then wait the next month to compete. So that shows off a lot of things. Mm -hmm. And for me to adjust it, adjust towards it, it was it, it takes a time. Because when I left high school in 2014, I never made my first national team until 2016, which is the Olympic. Yes. I went to Brazil. Uh, even though I quali I, even though I run and finish third in the hundred meters, I never get to compete there. So that played a little uh, problem with my mindset because I'm saying if I work so hard to meet the national team, one of the biggest uh, athletics stages ever, and I only get to run the uh, eats of a real day. And I do, and I run a hundred and make the team. That what is, is what is that saying? It really just plays a lot on my mind at that time. So I was like, "What? What's the sense of me training this hard? And yet still, at the end of the day, I don't get to do what I I, I want to do." My my heart, my heart goes out for you, Javan. So basically, you finished third at the twenty sixteen Olympic trials. And you yep. did not get the chance to represent, and and you, in fact you did ten zero two, and that yes, is indeed an impressive time. So you did not get the chance to compete in the flat hundred, and it took a toll in terms of your mindset. And believe me, it would have taken a toll on anyone who trained hard, did the time, and did not get a chance to run. So my heart goes out. In terms of that and 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 even so even so um running 10 to 10 zero two at that time um making an olympic team i have never been to a diamond league i've never been to europe to say guess what all right let's see if i can can earn some money let's get some experience nothing like that so uh, i don't know how anything and, and i don't know how any of those things you like but no i am a titan strap club um they have given me a lot of opportunities so far mm -hmm. and titans uh, they have brought me back from the brink of quitting because i was planning on to leave the country never to return mm. and if it was for you and blake saying guess what i'm here so Let's give it an next shot. I'm working with Gregory and Michael Freitas, so let's give it an next shot and see how it, how, how best it is. And I said, okay, I have nothing to lose. I've lost everything already. So giving it another shot, what it's not going to hurt. And I so so I did that. Um, within the time that I've been to been at. Uh, racers track club. I've been to more meets 
I've been to race, been at Racers Track Club for from 2014 to 2018. Um, yes, and now I, I can count on one hand and leave back fingers how many uh, meets I've been to out of the country. But when I but now I'm at um, Titans International. <laughs> it's been a joy for me. I can't wait to start compete again and get to go overseas and competing. You know, I, I wish you all the best, Javan, because definitely if anyone deserves that opportunity, it is you. Because when we look at your stats, what you did in high school, making the team at that young age, uh, you deserve every opportunity to achieve your highest potential the next time you step on the track. Since you talk about racers, it, it is said that you, you, you were at racers, then you, uh, you left for went a short to, to minute MVP. and you went to MVP and now you're at Titans. What was it like in terms of comparing those three, racers, MVP, and now you are with the Titans? Um, racers, I have to, I, no matter what, I have to tell, I, I have to say thank you for everything that you have done. Yes. Both the coaching staff and, um, the agents that work with the, the, the club, I have to say. Yes. I have to tell them thanks. Um, so... At it races, they are the one who let, helped me to get a contract. Um, they are the one who helped me also to run ten zero two. I have to shout out to um Patrick Dawson. Mm -hmm. He's the one who helped me with that. So I have to give him thanks. Yes. The difference is that at um races and um MVP. It's not much. It's just that once you decide, guess what? Track and field is what I'm doing, and I'm serious about the work, and I'm putting in it. You'll do it. You just have to do it. Um, with Titans, we have a small group, and um, the coaches there, they they look at you at some individual aspect. Like for me. Michael Freda is working with me on um, getting my getting the starts correct because yeah. I, I told him that guess what I want to be the national start starter for every meet we're going to national starter. He say okay, if that's what you want, let's work on it. So when I'm doing starts in the days, you'll be there with me correcting me right through nonstop. So that's the difference. So I get a one on one with coaches. At Titans, but at MVP and racers, uh, that luxury is not there because you know it's a big club yes. and they have a lot of athletes to, to look about, and there's more athletes than coaches. Mm -hmm. So, with Titans International and that small group, we get um, a one on one with the coaches. Looking back at your career, coming out of high school as one of the fastest schoolboy in the history of Jamaica. Is there any regrets that you have looking back right now? Um, to be honest, I, I wanted to play NFL. I wanted to be in the NFL. I saw this, I, I was just watching the sports, I'm like, this sport is a contact sport, it's aggressive. <laughs> I'm a very aggressive person. So, um, I was like, crap, should I stay, should I leave? Should I be, uh, um, go, to any, go to America and um, join the NFL or go to college there? Yeah. What would you say if you summarize everything that happened to you from high school to where you are now as the most important lesson you have learned? What would that be? Um, to summarize everything up from high school coming to pro level. Yes. What's the most important lesson would you say you learned? 
patience. <laughs> Explain. <laughs> um, it's just like as I said before, I was planning to quit. Yes. It's not like say, my mommy live in the US, my brother, and my sisters live in the US. I could, uh, I can leave at any time that I want. Okay. But being patient and saying, guess what? I want to achieve this. I've been to two Olympics already. I've never been to a world championship. I've gotten an Olympic gold medal, none from a world championship, but I've never competed individually yes. at any games. Yes. So being patient and working towards that, that's how I can summarize it right now. Excellent. And that is that is well said. I hope you continue to stay focused because I see what the Titans have been doing for you. Oh my. And you know, I take off my hats off to them because I think that this is something that we need in our country where you have people who genuinely care. You know, people who are taking those necessary steps and precautions to help young people achieve their highest potential. My, I have two more questions. This one is, based on all that you have been through, a young athlete coming out of high school just like yourself, what advice would you give them in terms of being prepared to make the transition from high school to college or from high school to the pros, what advice would you give these Just young athletes like I, yourself? They should know that high school and professional levels are on a whole different level. On a whole different level. It demands more. High school, you can get away with a lot. Professional, it's not nice. You have to put... If you decide, say, guess what? I'm doing track and field as a profession... That's what your focus have to be on. Nothing else. Okay. So in, in layman terms, you would say you did not feel as if you were fully prepared to go into the pros. It's once you're there, you had to figure out some of the things. Figure and... out. Exactly. Mm. I was just thrown out. Because I was running fast in high school. They expect, guess what? Once you leave high school running fast, you are going to continue running fast. Yeah. No, it's a whole different ball game. It's the big man league. It's where you can you cannot just do half of the program and expect to run fast or miss out so certain things. If the coach says jump, you just ask how oh, high or just jump. That's it. Because at the end of the day, the coach, the coach is write down their program to a specific. And if you don't perform at the specific that they want, they, they are not going to say, guess what? It's, my pro, it's the program. No, it's not. It's the lifestyle outside of track and field. It's what you do when you leave the training ground. Javan, it is... A pleasure talking to you. I really look forward to talking to you more. If I can get some weekly updates or monthly updates, I would definitely appreciate it because you have been through a lot. You demonstrate willpower, tenacity, resilience. You are still fighting. You are in a much better place now. Uh, my final question is, is there anything else you would like the world to know about Javan Minzi? They should never count me out. Never. Because they always do. High school, professional. Should never. Well said. Well said. I thank you very much, Mr. Minzi, for having this discussion with me. And I will definitely keep in touch with you. May God continue to bless and give you the strength to dominate the sprints in Jamaica and from me and my team I wish you all the best in everything Thank that you. you do.
Thank you very much. You're welcome.